Proctor. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming um, and or watching. We'll call the meeting to order. On the agenda this morning, first is um, discussion. Actually, there was another item before that. Uh, consideration of a contract for administrative and technical services. David? Uh, the first thing we'll do is the budget. You want to do budget first? Yes, ma'am. We'll, we'll get to that before we get out of here. All right. um, so where we're starting in, I already had your books turned to the right page, Water Revenue, um, Water Fund 30. Um, just a quick glance through that. Um, you'll see what the anticipated revenues are. you see where we're at year to date. Uh, or estimating to the year end. Um, you'll see where appropriated fund balance, we had $205,000 in this current budget uh, with the revenues that are coming in. You'll see that we will not need to make that transfer is what it's looking like now. Uh, you'll see that there is a transfer from appropriated fund balance in water of 342-408. Uh, that's a budgeting item. So those numbers will go down as the budget sort of moves a little bit. Um, but th that it will be a number that later, if we bring in the revenues just like we are currently this year, uh, then we won't have to transfer as much over at the end of the year. Uh, just like this year, we're going to be transferring over zero. Um, so there's no real big changes in this. Um, we're open for any questions on the revenue side. If there is none. I'm still reading. We're just yeah, looking at this for the first time. So taking a look at the numbers. Let me ask the, the general question. Um, over the last several years, we've been working towards solvency, so we didn't have to continue to transfer funds. Are we? Did I hear you say we're at that point now? So, it, well, this is a enterprise fund. Yeah. So this is the water in the sewer. Uh, we do some transfers out of water to sewer to help pay for the debt. That's the way it's always been set up. Those still are in place. Um, but we appropriated fund balance last year. The county did the water rate increase, as you remember, and you'll see that here in just a minute Correct. on, on some expenditures. Um, so we decided not to raise the rates. We kept the rates where they were and held. Uh, we did a slight increase for the first year, but held the second year. And we're recommending holding it flat again this year, no changes. Um, and with that, uh, we were in the budget to balance the budget. We're looking at 342408 transfer at this moment. If you look at our anticipated revenues for this year, you'll see where we're at, 4416. We're saying we're going to bring in 4376. So if those numbers fluctuate during the year next year and we actually do more or less, then that number right there will change as well. Um, as we've increased the revenue this year, we're not going to have to take anything out of fund balance. Thank you. Yes, sir. Water tap fees have gone down. Oh. So the water, yeah, the water tap fees. If you're looking at the revenue sheet, uh, you'll see where the revenue is coming in at two eighty two eight eight five. Uh, we anticipated coming in at three hundred and fifty. The previous year we had more houses being built, so what we did we looked at changing the numbers and taking the anticipations down, um, but just in case the recession or slowdown and things have slowed down some. Um, not too drastic. So those are the reasons why you see those numbers fluctuate there from the last two years ago to where we are now. There's 250. I'm sorry, 250. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. you. Seen too many numbers the last few days. <laughs> then the tower lease rental income goes up by the CPI every year. That's the reason yeah. you see that an increase there. And we have not signed the contract. We'll sign it the day after the meeting. Um, and so this number will change that new 33,000 or 35,000, whatever the number was. That'll be added into here, so that will go up that amount. So then the money that you need from fund balance will change too. That's why I say these are sort of still moving numbers right this moment.
I'm good. We're good? Yep. All right, so we're going to switch over one tab, 3720, Utility General Services. And then Mr. Hatton usually take this one. Excuse me, this is basically water admin. Um, if you look at the uh, first sheet that you see is the um, summary sheet, um, and you'll see the operating expenses, and you'll go, oh my goodness. Um, million dollars extra is from the extra billing that the county passed on to us when they went up on those rates. Uh, so we've been able to absorb that million dollars in here um, and still keep the rates where we're at uh, currently. Um, and use some money from fund balance. So that's what you see the big change, and, and you'll see it here in just a minute on expenditures. You go down to transfers and capital outlay. We don't need to take those out of admin, so me and Mr. Hatton has been looking at cleaning things up. So those come out of expenditures in the budget now. They're not an administrative kind of item anyway, so they are passed over. And you'll see we pick it up on uh, Trey's budget here in just a minute. But that big number that you see is about a million dollar increase in water costs. We knew it was coming. So that's from the county? Yes, ma'am. So when we get hit with a million dollar hit, then Mr. Hatton has to work his magic to make everything still balance out without panicking. Well, we did. So when we, this went up, Mr. Hatton had done a water analysis over the last few years, Good. same as he does this year. And we were able to maintain the rates that we currently had because we'd gone up the year before. Every six months we had gone up the previous year. And it's to a point where we can hold that line with some money from fund balance. Of course, not all of this is due to price increase. We've also growth here on the island increases, you know, increases our flows from the county also as we had more houses, condos, what have you. So if you'll turn one page and then go to the um, budgetary summary sheet, um, shows the line expenditures. Um, scrolling down through it, um, we did not put any overtime in for this year. We do show, show some this year. Um, that was a, sort of one of the software changes that we had previously. Uh, we are gonna do another software change this year, but they say they can keep the training in during the work hours. Um, so hopefully we will not acquire any overtime, but if we do, we'll come back to you and let you know what's going on there. Um, if you look through the line items, uh, basically things, um, the cost of the county water is the big one, and then contracted services. Uh, we added the uh, census software maintenance, which is $26,100. Uh, it's the new contract services that we had to pick up with our handhelds, and that is where that is added in. That's why I went from the 63.6 to 69.454, and there was a slight increase on a few of the other contracts as well. Um, but the big thing is the um, cost of county water. And then if you see down, follow the transfers, transfer to wastewater and transfer to capital reserve, as I said, will now be in 814 instead of 720. Did county water get more exp expensive because Leland pulled out of the county? Um, there were several reasons, um, but that, was, that is one of them. Can't outrun. And then they did the reverse osmosis treatment. Right. So they had to recoup the cost for that. And when they did raise the rates back the year before last, it was an 81% increase, which we ate for a while. Cool. So we have two things going on here. So we're continuing to subsidize the water rate, and we're also reducing fees in anticipation that we might not have as robust a growth period in terms of houses. But the other thing I'm noticing on the uh, budget summary page, and I don't know if this is a trend or is this is a, a one-off, but I'm looking at total salaries, wages, fringe benefits, and it's showing an increase of 8.75, and we have not yet talked about wages and fringe benefits. I'm just curious, is this, is this part of a trend or is it simply related to this department? So on the... I'm on the second. Yeah, I see where you're... 
So if you if you go to the summary sheet, that's that would that reflects the real change. What it was, the one point three three percent. The um, I have to go back and run the percentages. We noticed there was a few percentages off on the spreadsheets earlier this morning. Mr. Bach, that eight point seven five represent what salaries and wages with benefits is of the total department. So the wages are eight point seven five percent of the total. Total department. So if you, the increase is actually on the sheet before that. The summary. Okay. Where you see the 1.33. That is misleading. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that clarification. So that's what that column represents. Yes. Percent of total budget. Yes, ma'am. 1.33 is the actual number. Correct. Not over percent of. Right. So that line item represents 8.75% of the total, total, budget total budget for this fund. All right. Thank you. Right. That's yeah. correct. One of the few departments is not ask, asking for a vehicle. <laughs> they got one last year. <laughs> they got it last year. Don't give them any ideas. Yeah. <laughs> you overlooked that, Mark. Mr. That's Hatton. Trey. <laughs> Mark, hyphen represents that it's static or there is no number to put in there. What's the hyphen represent? It's just zero. That's what I want to know. It just left blank future years up on pickup. Thank you. That is something I have to reclass because downstairs when they get money in for hydrant rental, they take it to miscellaneous income and then I'll go through and analyze it and I'll move that money before the end of the year. Thank you very much. Another questions there. We'll move on to next tab. 3814. And as we, everybody there? Mm -hmm. So as we talked about before, some of the larger departments, when we had the um, one-time bonuses and changes last year in salaries, you'll start to see a little bit of different numbers in salaries and benefits for this year because that was a one-time payment. Um, so you see actually this is a, a decrease in the salary, but that is the reason why is because we had that money that was a one-time thing and this department was larger than what other departments are. So that's why you see it's 753.3768006 was the previous year. But uh, to keep in mind, we haven't set um, COLA or anything like that in these salaries because we haven't discussed that. We had a, um, a handout the other day that we haven't stuck these numbers into yet. But 814. That is something once we get to that then we'll be able to plug that in and go through. The uh, merits that still into the system uh, is on a factor of a 3% merit. I think the average is 2.6. 2.7. 2 so that stayed the same. Um, operating expenses, if we flip over to the next page, we can sort of see what that is. Um, and you'll, you'll see where we're where we're at on that. If you're scrolling down to uh, 2101 tap installation, um, this year, so we've had uh, water meters that were uh, hard to obtain. So we've had meters that were on back order um, over a year and a half and those kind of things. So that's where the big numbers came from. Um, and so you'll see a reduction there because we have ordered some additional meters to help carry us into the next year. Um, hopefully they get here uh, if not, then we may be carrying some money over again to next year. Uh, but right now, we reduced that from the 731 down to 550, um, and everything else um, is pretty much a, a wash going through. Um, contracted services yeah. changed. Contracted services changed some. It's and then the big item that you'll see uh, on the back side of that page. Uh, the transfers that are highlighted in yellow, just sort of a key thing. We told you all we were moving those items over from admin. 
So you see the numbers there for um, transfer to wastewater and transfer to uh, capital reserve. So we are putting some money back. We are taking some fund balance, but we're putting some funds back. So then during the process of the year, we'll be able to see if it's a wash or we'd make no, no transfer back or no money's out of fund balance. Part of the contract services increase is $50,000 for a required engineering study on the lead and copper pipes on the island, which we have to get done this year. This coming year. Yeah, that's a new. And that's trade, the, pretty trade, much the yeah. difference. Yeah, Trey can talk about a little bit year. more. But it, it is a uh, item that um, Trey's been stressing on for a little bit. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can tell a little bit about that, Trey. So this, yeah, the ETA. But someone's going to have to go look at every service line and tell if they're lead and copper or if it's plastic, and we don't know where to start. Not only that, we have to do an inventory for 9,800 homes. So it's. Yeah, this could be tough. The consumer. ones that are lead? Yes, sir. Over a period of years, they're going to give you every year you have to replace 6%. The town will have to do that, not the yes, homeowner? Sir. Yes, sir. And somehow, which we can't really understand, we have to determine whether the homeowners have lead on their side also. And how we're going to do that, we don't know. You'll only be, the town will only be liable for replacing what's ours. That's correct. correct. Yeah. No, yeah, they have a, so basically there's going to be five feet from the meter box onto the private property is what we have to analyze. So they give you a circle around the meter box and say, we need to know what material it is from here today. And that way, then Trey will be able to notify the homeowner on your side's lead pipe. Or it may have started with PVC, then went to lead within the first five feet, or started with lead the first five feet, and then went PVC. Um, but that's all they're asking us to monitor is that first five feet. But he has to identify on both sides of the meter what the uh, piping material is going forward. The old taps, the $25 taps. <laughs> Were those lines run as well? Um, basically, we have all this is on the beachfront. The, the only place we know of any lead is the old four inch main line that runs down the beachfront. Yeah. But a lot of that was replaced after storms. Yeah, a lot of that was replaced. And a lot of it has been replaced over the years. Yeah. But the issue is, no one knew we had to keep up with it. So we don't know which ones which were ones replaced, replaced and which ones which were ones not. Were. That's yeah. correct. So we don't have an idea of the scope of the, the town's vulnerability yet. No. So what the county did, they went into it as a 0% known. So they looked at it, it was 100% unknown. So that's the same way we're going to have to take a look at it is we have, we have no record to give them to start with on a basis. Right. So we're having to look at 100% unknown right at okay. this moment. For the certain years and above. But, but my point is, we, we haven't yet identified the vulnerability. No, sir. Even if Correct. replacing five feet, if we have 300 homes and the costs, yeah. right? We no, that's, that's part of the study. Yes, sir. So you end up designating one of your people just oversee that one project pretty much for the year. <laughs> no, that's what, the, that's what the contract will cover. Uh, we would hire Bill to come in and start potholing every meter box. Now we'll have to go out and do locates, uh, find meters and those kind of things. If we've gone to electronic, uh, someone may have um, mulch or something on top of them that we need to identify. Uh, but they go in, that's part of their contract, they go in and find all these things for us because we don't have the staff to be able to go out and do all that. That's part of Mr. Hatton's 267 in the budget. <laughs> for the increase 50,000, yes sir. So how of course, you're not going to know this answer either. I know there are some homeowners who have replaced their 
pipes due to pinholes or whatever. Mm -hmm. You have no way of knowing that either. Correct? No, that, that was mainly copper, but yeah. yeah. And we found some of the lead heads after hurricanes when we had to clear the roads or the road was missing and we had to grade and we pulled them out one by one <laughs> and had to go back and fix them. So <laughs> there, there's things that you just, that we've done that we didn't document. Um, and some of the old line, it may have gone north and then went under and went south, or it could have went over and went south. So there was no consistency on that back in Trey and them's world. So you can't always go by that. No. So we have an unfun unfunded mandate and we have, we still don't have an estimate of our vulnerability, is what you're telling us. Yes, you won't, the report doesn't get submitted to the federal until uh, October of 2024. Um, so as the process goes on, once we have somebody start, then there's a, uh, a form and stuff that they start laying out notification of the town. As we go through, we'll learn more and we'll have more of an idea before next time's budget. Right, but we should have our representatives protest this kind of unfunded mandate that's being imposed on us. We, we have no idea what the cost could be. It could be quite considerable, correct? Oh, you can. Um, we can we can protest it, uh, but it's a, a federal act that's been imposed, and there's not a whole lot we can do to stop it right now. So. Understood, but I still think we should be on the record saying this is yet another right unfunded mandate that falls on our taxpayers potentially. But the mitigation run rate you said is six percent per year. Per year, right? So after after October 16th of 2024. Yeah. So each year then you have to replace 6% of what you find. Right. Yeah. So they're going to look at the age of items and stuff that they have and the age of the house and then they can reflect on what their recommendation is just like the uh, studies that we've had before where they came in and look at things <coughs> on the age aspect from new to old and then we start replacing those items just like you would a capital item. You're right about that. Right, so let's say it is 300 meters at 6% run rate, that's only 18 per year. So that may not be too, may, we may not have all doom and gloom is I guess what I'm trying to say until we get our snapshot of what what really is the work effort. Yes, sir. And yeah. then we can, the 6% run rate <coughs> help us plan out expenses. Yeah. I don't think it, I don't, I don't think the back side's going to be as bad to us. Right. It's the front side doing the study that's yeah. going to be the worst part. Getting a grasp on it is going to be the... So, so over the years, as as we've put in uh, new homes, uh, a lot of the old houses were tore down. We replaced their services. But we just didn't keep a record because we had no idea the EPA was going to do this in the future. We just started a new account on the water meter so <clears throat> but that's that yeah in a nutshell or in a water meter i should say and the cost of that survey or, or the assessment 50, the fifty thousand dollars is the 50. on a per home basis that's not a lot Other than that, nothing surprising. Mm -mm. If there's no other questions for Trey, we're going to let him get out of here. You shocked us enough, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why you didn't ask for a truck. <laughs> <laughs> Poor fella. <laughs> Thank you, Trey. Thank, Thank you. you for all you do, Trey. It's items like this that the reason we stress putting reserve money back every single year. Mm -hmm. So the next one we're going to is 31. Mr. Mark Moore. Um, we'll go over the revenue sheet, but um, wastewater fund 31 revenues. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if you look at that, um, there's not a whole lot of excuse me again, there's not a whole lot of changes uh, within that. 
um, transfer from the water fund. Last year we had budgeted 450. We're looking at doing 500 this year. Uh, transfer from reserve, uh, 368,879. If you look at the transfer from sewer assessments, um, what we've done is taken the balance of the sewer assessments um, because that collection is pretty much over there. And uh, we've taken that and done it through the payoff. So you'll start seeing roughly $839,396 coming into the budget from here on out because uh, that's what those dollars was for. Um, and so Mr. Hatton figured the um, ratio for that yesterday and we stuck that number in there. Um, but everything else is pretty much um, spot on. The only other thing for easy system development fees, um, there's one thing that we need to add. We're, we're looking at doing this current year, not add for next year. But the only thing left for us to do this year is a study on the sewer development fees. Uh, that's a, something that the federal people require us to do every five years. Um, so it's time for us to get ours done, and then we'd implement it uh, after October uh, and probably change the fees if it was appropriate in the January retreat. That was just a reminder for me. <laughs> I didn't think y'all would remember that we <laughs> had to do that one. <laughs> But uh, yes, we, we have to do that one. Um, so there's no real big changes. Um, transfer from COVID-19 funds, that will go away. Uh, that line item will. Uh, we were just showing you that back in 21-22, we used $7,472 of that. Why salty dog in there if it's zeros all the way across? It, it, when you get the sheet next time, it won't be there. Right. Okay. I took it off of uh, expenditures, but I forgot to take it off revenue. The reason it was on there in the first place when at Bill Smith Park, the people that had Salty Dog gave us a contribution for the wastewater department to start taking over the maintenance of it. And so I had to show it on that line item. So as David said, that'll be gone before we print. Yep. Now you'll see a Salty Dog expense that Mark will talk about. Um, so most we'll... of the expenses have gone down a little bit. A tad. On the expenses, if you'll turn to 31820, the next next tab, um, you'll see the budget summary sheet. Um, you'll see the increases in capital outlay, which we'll go over here in just a second. Um, salaries, again, that's why I said you'll see some line items are going to be de decreased and some will be increasing, but it's that one-time uh, salary adjustment that reflected those pays. That was a one-time check. Um, sewer treatment, uh, after Mr. Hatton ran the numbers, and I know the numbers look almost identical, but it pretty much is. Um, then the transfers, we're not showing any transfer this year at this time, uh, going to reserve because of the extra expenditures that we have in capital outlay. Um, sewer treatment cost number that you see there, that big number, that's the debt that the county has. That's our percentage of the county debt on the West Brunswick sewer treatment plant. Yeah. That's the principal and the interest. Mm -hmm. So it is going down just slightly. <laughs> Boy's goodness. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we go to the uh, summary sheet, uh, the next page, um, showing the uh, line items. Um, you'll scroll through, you'll see everything's pretty much rolling the same. Chemicals went up a little bit. Um, uh, I know y'all don't price chlorine, but chlorine gas is uh, going up on granular and gas. Uh, and we use that at uh, both the facilities. Um, groundskeeping supplies, uh, everything sort of looks about the same. Salty dog. Um, that's where the money comes, that's an expenditure instead of a revenue. That's why Mr. Hatton brought that back up. Um, so if you look through, I mean, we've pretty much tried to hold the lines where, we're, where we can hold the lines. And sludge removal, you'll see the increase. It's costing a little more to have someone come and take our byproduct and dispose of our byproducts.
And this is one of the ones, if you'll turn the page, that I said um, we had some typos on our percentages. You'll see that's 103%. We did real good. Um, but that'll be corrected when it comes back to you. Um, the capital outlay improvements. Um, these are some of the items we talked about during the uh, retreat. Um, but uh, what they are is we have the membranes for the satellite plant and the clear well filter walls, the concrete rehab. Mm -hmm. uh, the membranes are 100,000 and the clear well filter concrete wall rehab is 75. Um, and then the last item that we're talking about today at the retreat is um, a firm to be able to go after grants. And so most, almost everything that we talk about today for improvements or capital in sewer is what we are applying for on the grants. So hopefully we can gain some of this money back through the grant process. Good deal. But you do not see any kind of vehicles or anything like that this year because we are fully stocked now in the treatment facilities. And again, as David said, on the water, the two departments, the capital transfers to capital reserves are now in one department. Rather than a piece of it out of 820 and a piece out of 830, we're going to put it all in 830 for simplified. So you're still saving for when they do need vehicles. But we're trying to hold it as tight as we can hold it. Um, next item, 31830. That's the collection side of this department. Capital LA, we'll talk about that here in a second. Capital improvements, we'll talk about that one. Debt service, um, then the revenues, or the reserves, excuse me. We did put some dollars in this. Um, so we've been looking at trying to make uh, places for people to grow inside departments. Um, this is one that we're looking at reclassification of some of the people um, to give them um, some expandability within the department. Uh, where act, he marks actually the staffing wise now he's been able to look at it over the last year and we're probably going to start a second crew inside this department. Um, so we'll be changing one of these people you'll see eventually two crew leaders um, then two of the collection system mechanics or operators and then mechanics and we're going to try to level that out within the department. <coughs> So there is some money put into the um, budget for salaries and benefits to make these changes within the department. We had like four different departments that we had that this year. We had talked about that in the fire department the other day where we put some reclassification money in. So Mark may be hiring. Uh, there won't be any additional employees. It'll just be reclassification of the people we have. Well, like uh, if it was a maintenance worker one, we'd make a maintenance worker two or, or a second level for the person. But they'd be steps that the individual would have to go through uh, to be able to get that certification. Um, there may be a, a state certification requirement where they have to obtain their collection uh, license. Um, so it's not a given kind of thing. It's a job description will be changed and a new one created for these steps. So David, uh, how many departments are going to experience this internal mobility step that you're talking about? I think it was four. Total cost of that? Uh, I don't we have put top. about five. Huh? Five about five thousand each one of them. Well, the fire department had the largest uh, because of what we're looking and doing there. Um, I'd say on the taxable side. Uh, 
22,000, probably on the tax, uh, tax side, and then over on the enterprise fund, um, probably 10, 000, 32 total. And that would not be at all at one time. Once we change the certification, if they have to obtain a certain license, they may not get that license that first year. It may be something that comes into the second year, but we're looking at um, trying to lay that out to make sure that everybody's treated the same going up through. And when we do this, we'll be looking at public works in the next cycle to see what we need. But we did theirs two years ago. My question is, is purely informative. Yes. So if we're launching an HR strategy to create internal mobility, presumably to keep people here who have skills, I think that's a good thing. What I'm asking for is the ballpark cost and the timeline to implement that strategy. Yeah. So you're telling me 32 over several years? No, it would, so this year we're, re, well, we're already rewriting the job descriptions <clears throat> currently in this budget. Um, then come July, we'll, he'll evaluate the people within his department to see who or how many can move up into certain things. The crew leader, I'd say, is a given. And each person that we move, um, I'd say, is in between two to probably 4,000, each one of them, if we move these people. Let me ask for this um, on behalf of council. So when we get to July, this, I'm going to call it a strategy, which I believe it is, the, the deployment of this strategy affected X amount of employees, and the total cost was Y, and we get that as a summary sheet so we can see it. Yeah, you'll get that at the end. I don't want to have to pull it out of individual accounts if it's an organization-wide strategy, which it sounds see. like it is. Yes, sir. Okay. When we, because um, we uh, put in the organizational charge for each department, so you'll see that. So, do we track retention in terms of staff? Is that something we monitor? Not actively, it sounds like. No. So if this is a strategy. So what we are doing is we we have to so in Mark's field uh, you have to look at what the other communities are doing around you. Right. And so when the county and Leland started reorganizing and looking at their departments, um, we have some smaller towns giving everything they have over to the county. Uh, so when the county absorbs these things, they they look and they decide each one of these departments that are absorbed to make sure they place their people, and then they review what they had, what layers they had to see if somebody needs to go into, or they create a new layer for the qualifications of that person. So basically we're sort of mimicking of what the other field people are doing around us so we are compatible to keep the people here and we don't lose the people to go take a, a maintenance worker two job that may only be paying $1,500 more than we are, but we're giving our people somewhere to step up and grow to. Good strategy. It is a good strategy, but as with all strategies, there are caveats. So one is the equity of reclassification and whether everyone has access to that and how that works. And the other is the danger that we reorganize to a point where it becomes too costly for us. Right? So we had this discussion with the fire department, you know, their ratio uh, their leadership ratio is basically one to eight. Now, their argument is because of the shift structure, they have to have it that way. But if we do that across the board, it gets costly down the road. Yes, sir. That's no, I understand that. Bringing that's, up. that's why we have taken on a department each year. And we've done this through. Public Works was uh, last year when we started moving their people. Um, and then we did the fire, I mean, the police department the year before. So we've done this as a, as a gradual improvement through all departments. Okay. I just want to see it mapped out. I, yes. I agree with the strategy. Yes, sir. So I think the offset of the institutional knowledge you lose when someone goes elsewhere for employment, um, the cost of getting that next person up to speed is kind of an equalizing factor. We have good people. We should retain them. We should pay them fairly. We should treat them well. I just want to see... Oh, the yes, data sir. laid out, that's all. I, I like the strategy. We'll, we'll write up the whole thing. Okay. Um, the other item that we had was uh, the capital outlay uh, system. <clears throat> and these items are some of the things that we'll be putting in the grant application. 
Um, but uh, we had a, a mainline sewer camera, $137,000, and a mini Kubota uh, for this department. That's why we were looking at the additional crew leader uh, so we can start making some of the repairs ourselves. Uh, capital improvements, uh, we have some sewage pumps, control panels, force main along um, East Oak Island Drive, uh, taking on the second generator trailer rehab, and then the uh, vac pit packages, 24 units of those, for a total of 590000 So everything except the pit packages will be applied for into the grant. And hopefully we get a few of them. And then you, the debt services, as you see, for those down below. They'll just disappear in 2034. <laughs> You're almost there. Any questions for Mr. Moore? <laughs> a fine job, Mark. <laughs> thank you for all you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, sir. Keep it flowing, Mark. I do my best. <laughs> I, I guess you assume you're leaving now. <laughs> keep it, keep it flowing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Any other questions for those? It's pretty straight. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. So we get to the rec center and um, community center. Do we have a tab for that? Yes, sir. Getting ready to tell you. 10-620. Uh, Good at that. Up front. That's what these tabs are for. Everybody there? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we'll scroll on through. Um, there's still some decisions council needs to be making um, that's not in here. Um, and one of them is the rec center, whatever we're going to do about that. Um, so, so there's no dollars or anything in here for that at this point. Um, the other item is uh, pickleball courts, new pickleball courts. Um, that is not in here. It'll be a council decision on what to do going forward with that. Um, staff has looked at, uh, uh, I think one of them came back at a Bill Smith Park. Uh, Heather at that time didn't know that was a, a disposal site uh, altogether, and those properties are used for disposal of our wastewater land or a wastewater application. Um, so we can't really put it out there. Um, and then uh, the location here, um, Looking at, and now that we've started with the paid parking and other concerns that people are having uh, with the community center, um, y'all got all those emails about uh, the, the ladies not having nowhere to park and those kind of things. We've at, tried to emphasize parking in those areas. We haven't been inundated by parking yet. Um, season's coming, so we'll have to sort of see what happens there. Um, and the pickleball court lo locations behind Town Hall, um, if you look out the windows, Town Hall area is pretty full. Um, so there's not really a, and then when we add a facility, uh, it, if it wasn't even pickleball, if it was um, another basketball court or whatever we're adding, we got to add parking for it. Uh, and right now we're pretty parking limited, as you know. Um, so I understand the, uh, the concerns and the needs of a pickleball court, um, but I don't think the location at Town Hall would be sufficient or at Bill Smith Park. Um, we need to maybe start looking at other locations for the town to purchase um, for pickleball. But um, at this time, it's not in the budget. If it's something that council wants to tell us to still take up and look at putting in there, um, then we can look at it. But uh, that's something 
I just wanted to get that off the top to tell you what's not in here. I um, think we need to address the parking issue of our non-residents at the that used to pickleball courts way before we ever add pickleball courts. That's why it's y'all's decision. <laughs> it's not. Um, but that, that's something, I just want that out there um, so y'all can think about that. And, and like I said, this is a budget workshop. This is just a, a draft where we have right this minute. If it comes back to something and we want to add pickleball courts, um, then we'll have to look at it as adding parking and stuff as well. Um, so if you look through the budget uh, that's in front of you right this moment, um, you'll see on the summary sheet, you'll see a permanent part-time new. Um, Heather and her department has been very good at um, working everything that they throw at the community and as many items as y'all know. Um, but they accrue comp time and those things, then we have them take those times off, which then increases more of a burden back onto Heather and her staff. And so what we've talked about this for a year now is adding a permanent part-time position to be able to help Ryan with his concerts and his um, uh, farmer's market and all those items to be able to reduce some of the staff action for that. Uh, even though staff hasn't, you know, not jumped in in here and been able to do these things, but I think it's time to offer them some relief and try to reduce the comp time that they are carrying and, and some of the strain that we're putting on them to have to do the after hours activities. Um, if you look at the budget part of it, um, you'll see the capital outlay equipment, uh, 2223 was $289,600. Um, There's still things out there, the truck is coming. The pickleball um, court um, resurfacing, um, I think Heather can answer that here in a second, but Scott's looked at it. Uh, got some prices, came back high, and I think he's actually re-advertising. Um, then we had some rec center improvements in that number, around $48,000. Uh, so you'll see those items will come down, and you see at the end of the day it's $38,000. And that is the equipment that we put in, excuse me, that we discussed during the uh, retreat. Uh, Heather looks at her equipment every year, comes out with a list that needs to be replaced, and we try to keep up with the three-year capital improvement plan. And that is the $38,000 is those items that she has um, specified this year that needs to be replaced. Last year it was two eighty nine dollars because of the bus. No, this is the truck, the resurfaces of the pickleball, and the rec center improvements, the ones I just sort of went over. So, and now that two eighty nine, dollars we haven't done the res... Uh-oh. We haven't done the resurface. No. And we haven't done the... The truck's on the way. I heard tomorrow morning. Truck's the bathroom coming. still hasn't been, has it been improved? No. Bathrooms? Wasn't there money in the budget for the bathroom? There was money for the What's bathroom. The put in new bathrooms. Um, but that is what is um, going to be carried over probably into next year because we're not going to be able to get that. But there is money in there. If I may, uh, go back to the beginning for just a moment. Um, because what's not in the budget is the primary issue before us. Either we're going to, <laughs> we just continue to drift on this, it's so frustrating. Either we're going to rehab and cosmetically and functionally improve the existing structure, or we're going to blow it up and build new. Um, but again, we... We don't have a mechanism. We don't have a, to make the decision. Seemingly, we don't have a plan. And I, for one, uh, think we need to have a separate discussion of the rec center and um, give it the attention and give it the the scrutiny that it it warrants. Uh, I know you have other rec things, but frankly, they're all subordinate to either. Reviving the current center and making it uh, a kind of center that's attractive to our community and serves our community, or we need to build a new one and we need to figure out how to pay for it. So, I mean, this council has made some very, very difficult decisions uh, about the CRC, uh, about facilities, about paid parking, and I think we're quite capable of making this decision with sufficient time. I, I don't think we can kick this down the road any longer. If we were to start today, it would be several years out, right? So uh, I would move that at some point 
before we end this budget process, we come back and talk about the rec center. Um, well, that's fine with us. Okay. Well, I think we need a plan. I don't think we can just yeah. say there's no funding and therefore it, it, it resides in limbo. <laughs> so one of the last meetings y'all had, it was discussed if y'all were going to form a group or we don't know what y'all well, I don't know about today. forming <laughs> groups, but we need a plan. We need a decision and then we need a plan. That's what we're, I know. We're 12 months into it. Still waiting. Yeah. We're waiting for direction. <laughs> we brought back something that, that was not wanted, and so now we're waiting on the next step. So I think our last our last shot at this, Mayor, you were going to form a committee. I was going to do the scope of work and uh, to pose to council. And that is part of a... That's the first step in forming a committee is to figure out what the scope of work is so then we know what the um, skills um, and knowledge that we need on that committee. When can we expect that? I think that's what's... That's what, that is the holdup. I take accountability for that. Oh, I just... Give us your thoughts on when you think you can put that together. By the first? Yeah, but either way, we can schedule a meeting just for Rex there. And we'll get that sent out. Target the first. Transferred to reserve the 150000 you see there. That is towards that building. Is that toward the building or is that toward the uh, surfacing? Because there's 150. That's toward the building. Okay. okay. Didn't we allocate a million last year to set aside for architectural and ground, groundbreaking? No. no. Okay. You discussed it, but it was not yeah, put into discussed. the budget. Okay. Well, yeah, to be fair, we, we did discuss it, and a rendering was submitted and rejected uniformly across this dais. There wasn't a single person said, oh, I'd like that. That's cost effective. So that's where we are. We're dead in the water. We need to move on this. Even if the movement is to say, you know what? We have so many other things and, and, and commitments financially, and though we can't do this right now. And we'll do the best we can and limp along with the current rec center, or we're going to have to be bold and say, knock it down, build something new for the next 30 years. We need to make a, a decision here. That's all. Totally agree. And I'll rest my case. <coughs> well, we'll send some, we'll look at the calendar and see what's available. <coughs> so since we haven't resurfaced the pickleball court, is that pushed so the, forward? The pickleball court is back out for bids, and when it comes in, they have a pickleball tournament. This weekend. Next weekend. Um, so it'll be after that. The prices came in the first time. I don't remember exactly what they were. 70000 over what we were quoted six months before. Yeah. So um, then Scott was supposed to be going back out to get additional prices. If it comes in higher or lower or, or whatever it is on that time, um, then we will take that and uh, resurface the pickleball. And uh, Mr. Hatton will use the funds... Um, we talked about yesterday for the uh, reserve funds. Uh, if it comes back and transfer to capital reserve, we need to take some funds for that. You have dollars there that we could utilize to put toward the resurfacing. You just wouldn't transfer the whole 150. You transfer 100 or, or whatever the number is so we could pay for the pickleball. But when your advisory board member, Paul Dubai, came up with the 150000 the two companies you got the bids from was not the one that he came up with at 150,000, was it? I've been told that company is still there at 150,000. But I don't believe that they responded. It was through Scott, but the report that we got was that they never responded to Scott the first time. So when he resends it, he's going to contact them directly. Is the 70,000 uh, materials? Is that part of the inflation? Scott 
has the quotes, he'd be he able to answer that. Okay. to that. I'm sure it, ha I mean, almost has to be materials. Well, there's a way to pay for it. What well, I'm trying to tell you, if it comes back in this time and it's high, then we can still accept one of the bids and get the process done. Please keep in mind if it's not built before the end of June, that's the type of item that we do a budget amendment and carry it over. That money, you know, you're not going to lose it. No other questions on that one. Uh, we'll go over to 10621 Community Center. You'll see a reduction right off the bat in salaries and benefits. We had an individual retire that was making a, a, a larger salary than what the position was filled with. And then the person that was hired uh, did not. Uh, need the benefits, so that was uh, another savings of about eighty, eighty-three hundred dollars. So that's why you see the reduction in that large amount in the salary items. We didn't lose any staff; it's just that the person we replaced with was a lower rate in pay because the other person had been here for a long time. Now they're on our retirement part, um, but that's why you see that number change. In the operating expenses she kept; she held everything pretty tight. The outlay. Um, this year, she had a transit uh, van in. Um, they looked at it, uh, and her staff has reviewed it. Um, and you see fifty-two thousand dollars in next year. So the sixty-two or six. Okay, hang on, let me get the exact number. I think it was twenty-six thousand dollars for the transit van. Um, that money will be transferred over to next year. Um, she's not going to get the transit van. She wants to go ahead and hold off and get the minibus. Um, which will be able to transport the 14 people. The 14 people, which would be better than the, the transit van. And that's why um, you see that in that capital, we're not going to be getting that truck this year, or van this year. Sorry. But Heather is, um, like the other department heads, are trying to hold the line pretty tight. Still provide the same service. There is one change she's had to make this year. She had to put in a grease trap um, at the um, community center due to the clogging of the lines and the washing of the pans and those kind of things. Um, and so that's still being worked out to be added in this year. So that's one of the projects she's still wrapping up uh, for this season. She does a lot, and their staff does a lot with them, um, as you can see, the, what she has. Middleton Park and, and Rick has gone up from 62 to 75. Is that not in uh, Scott's budget anymore? That's in the Parks and Rec's budget? So certain facilities, um, so that is, as you see on the next page, 5401, that's for the bathroom at the South Softball Skate Park. So that would be inside hers, but then Scott would be the one who has to maintain and sort of take it over it after that. Gotcha.
with that, we'll look at the um, rec center and, and try to bring something back to you pretty quick on that one. And we'll go ahead and look at some expenditures going forward for architect, engineering, and those kind of things, just so you have some kind of format and layout of how, if we decided to do something today, what it would take to get those done. I think where we left it was, like Mr. Brock said, nobody liked the drawings that were brought back, but we gave you no direction as to which way to go with it. So, I mean, it was left in limbo. And it wasn't, it, I mean, I don't think it was staff. No, I'm just saying we need to provide. <laughs> or even how much You've asked for some things exactly. going forward. And we didn't, so we don't want council just to say, hey, here's $9 million, figure out what you can do or anything like that. It's a, it's a process that's going to take two years to three years. Um, the engineering and architect, first we got to decide if you want a rec center or do you want a community building? Because um, we have a lot of people that are wanting to rent space or utilize space inside, or are we making it a rec center for activities? Um, so council has to decide those kind of things first. And then whatever we're doing, we got to figure out the parking for it because we know what's limited down Correct. there. But then if you start creating committees, then you've got the rec staff, you've got council, you've got our staff, and you've got a rec board. And then you start creating more committees, and you're going to have a cluster. Yeah, well, I think if we bring back to you sort of the basic how it needs to go going forward it's, and the scenarios that would have to be first, second, and third, um, and then construction is the final product. Uh, but at some point, you have to figure out, like I said, when we when we brought back that box, I mean, that's what it was. It was a box. Um, it had uh, two stories, one story. Everything got changed around. One open space, two closed spaces, one retaining wall, one removable wall. It, it just kept circulating Nothing inside a box and, and no that wasn't what none of us wanted but that was for the dollars we could afford um so that's what we had to bring back is lay out a scenario going forward and sort of a frame it for you so you can see exactly what's going to happen and then y'all could decide a committee or non-committee or give it back to the reg board or whatever y'all want to do but instead of figuring we, we need to have a plan step by step and i agree with you step by step of this is what we can do for one million. This is what we can do for six million. This is what we can do for eight million. And then somewhere along the way, and that's where our hands have been tied and nobody's been able to go forward. I'm retired. We need to have an answer of at this many million, this is where we are, and this is where the budget is, and this is where the thinking is. Now let's get on with an architectural plan and, and, and some drawings. But after you come up with the scenarios, we need to figure out the money amount that we can live with yeah, well, because if we don't if we only do step one and we never do step three and four we're, we're, where we've we been for the last 12 months i think the the first thing for council to figure out is what you really want you either want a rec center or you want a community building because they're two different things or you want a, a, hybrid. a, a uh -huh. hybrid of both and then you start looking at the cost of square footages for both of them yeah, and at the retreat, I had suggested that they are two separate amenities for parks and recreation, and they should be two separate buildings. We need something that is a, a updated community center that meets the needs not only of the community center's operations today, but the needs of clubs, other classes, things of that nature and it needs to have some sort of kitchen facility. So we need a we need a better community center, period. And then I think the other building needs to just be dedicated to fitness. I think trying to bring fitness and a community center together under one roof is a bad, I think that's a bad concept now. As I think about this and go back and look at survey, I think they need to be separate buildings. We have the sites available to us to do both. The issue will be what comes first. Do we work on the Empire. current rec center site and focus on a community center down there for clubs, activities, and classes, and administrative offices? And then, you know, we can look at this site adjacent to this facility and architecturally design something that is a fitness center slash admin expansion we're, we're running out of office space here 
and we could really use more space here. I don't think we're going to kick the police department out and and go take their space, although there's some space over there we can temporarily take we, on. We started on the second floor. Yeah, so <laughs> we, we've already started, right? We did. So, so I think we need to to have a higher view. Instead of sitting here saying, well, what can we spend for, what can we get for a million dollars? Let's go even higher than that and say, if we're serious about providing this community with what it needs, a community center and fitness opportunities, then I think those are two separate projects and they may have to be sequential. I don't know if we can finance in parallel, but I think that's the debate that we need to have. Um, like I said, we've got the property. We shouldn't only look at the current rec center property. We've got opportunities, other site locations that we can leverage. So I think we need to have that broader conversation. And in the, in the context of that, we have a show place town hall. We have a show place fire department, two or three buildings. I don't want to have an old outdated rec center. Uh, if we're going to jump into this, we need to jump into it and do it right. Uh, as Councilman Bach said, it's going to be our show place for 30 years. Uh, I there goes right. your tax rate, Bill. <laughs> uh, I want to do it right. Interest rates will come back down. We'll borrow the money. Uh, I don't ever have my pain in advance. Uh, we need to go forward. What else you have? Um, that's all I have. I'll just figure up some dollars on the next item that we have. <laughs> um, any questions for Heather while she's here today? No, but you're going to... Uh, I would request, and I think you agree to this, we'll set aside time to explore the community center, fitness center option, and we can begin to lay out the, the decision points. Contours too, as Sheila was reminding me. Of. We need something like that. Contours too. I held the button and Through tried to talk steps. him into that. Right. Each <laughs> of the steps to get to the decision. So that, that will take some time, and I appreciate you doing that, Mr. Kelly. Um, one quick question for Heather. With the upgrade to the bus instead of the transit van, is that going to require someone with a CDL to operate that bus? No, um, that's why it's a 14 passenger. Once you go to 16 passengers, that's when you have to have a CDL. Okay. Yep. I just wanted to make sure because I, I, don't, I don't think we have anyone on staff in your area that has a CDL. No. That is correct, okay. yes. Nobody CDL anymore? Not in the community center. We have a summer camp staff yeah. who will drive the 24 passenger bus in the summer with kids. She drives for Brunswick County Public Schools. And I have 26 of them on the other side over there. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that's no more questions. We'll let Heather get back to it. Thank you, Heather. Um, the last item on here is, um, if Mayor, if it's okay to go ahead. Um, consideration of the contract for the uh, technical services. Um, we asked Mr. Um, Eads to go ahead and review this. He reviewed it. Um, he didn't see any problems with what uh, is presented here to you today. Uh, sort of the going rate is the 12%, as you see in the contract on page two, um, or page four. It's page two of the contract, um, maybe page four of the document. Um, but if you'll see there, once the agreement is completed between the funder and the town of Oak Island, uh, you'll see it's an amount of 12%. And then you see there's another date here, July 4th of 2024, um, if we wanted to extend or carry it past that point, that's when we would have to do something at that point. Um, this individual is also looking for funds for several of the communities around us. Um, everybody's shopping for the same dollars, uh, I should say. Um, not only in Brunswick County, but New Hanover County, everywhere else. Um, so we believe we have a good chance of getting some of it. I ain't saying we'll get all of it, but we're going to submit as many of these little small things as we can submit. Uh, wrap them up and see if we can get any any one of them or all of them. Uh, we're going to put it in that kind of aspect into the grant. Um, we already have some of them shovel ready, uh, so that helps us on some of it. It doesn't. It's not a requirement for these funds to be shovel ready, but 
sometimes it does help somebody to make a decision that it's ready to go, it's already been permitted. Um, so that's, that's what's in front of you for consideration today. Mr. Kelly, I don't see the, the cost. So the call, the, if we get monies, then we pay him, if we got the um, $500,000 or whatever, just saying a number, we would pay him 12% of that cost for his services. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't see a dollar amount. If, if he doesn't get anything, we don't pay him anything. Just a straight up 12%. grant writer. He, well, he's a grant writer. He's also administering it. He's also engineering services included in some of this. I mean, he's doing quite a bit for the 12%. It's not just the uh, uh, grant submission. Yeah. And 12.5% is not as bad as, as some are. It's, it's a lot of these people do it on a percentage basis just because if they don't get it, then, you know, we're trying to make him do the best grant that he can so he also yeah. gets <laughs> compensated. Well, higher compensation, correct. Okay. So, Lisa, do we need a consensus today or motion? A motion for that one, please. I'll make the motion. You make it. There you go. I'll make a motion to approve the contract with Environmental Service Consultants Incorporated for administrative and technical services provided in engineering and project development as presented, contingent upon final review by the town attorney. Second. Second. Seconded. All in but favor? The projects have to be completed before 20. Mark, you in favor? Mark. Mark, you in favor? He's thinking. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. He, had to, he asked a question about um, the time here on uh, page two again, or four. And that same thing, the very last sentence uh, of once the agreement about for the page, um, all the, so in the grants that we're applying for, they have to be completed before July 4th of 2024 is the way it's written. He has his caveat, which is the same ones that were approved before, then a new agreement would have to be entered after that because that's as long as his contract can be for. It's because there is an end date on the monies that we're trying to obtain. And then we'd have to ask the grant provider extensions and everything else as well. Right, but the new agreement could come with a new fee arrangement. May include, may, does say shall. But it, I mean, if I was him, I'd write the same thing in there. <laughs> but, the, but the contracts are supposed to be completed before 2024. They're supposed to be. Okay, all right, sorry. So we have. Should be. Or shall be, because we don't. Ours aren't time consuming. I think the motion should reflect the fact that the contract is paid on a contingency basis of twelve percent. Twelve and a half. No, it's twelve. Twelve. Okay, twelve. Sorry, yeah. twelve. So I would add that, and now if that's acceptable to Councilwoman Dell, I'll second the motion. Yeah, well, we already had a motion and a second, and sort of a vote. So. <laughs> So, I love the vote, correct. I mean, I think the motion was to um, uh, prove it as presented, and that's included in the agreement, so. All right, fair enough. So do we have a second? We do, we have. We have a second. We have three waiting for the, okay. there we go. And so it's unanimous. Okay. All right. So. Motion so, carries. So the last thing I have for you is something I laid on your. Yeah. <laughs> need a consensus on. Um, Pledge of the Pink, the group that came to you, um, a month ago or when, whenever that was. Um, don't remember. They're trying to break the Guinness's uh, world record and they have asked the town to contribute toward that fund. Um, that is totally up to whatever council wants to do. Um, that's why I said we just need a consensus on what y'all would like to do. I think last time we gave them permission to go forward and and get the town's blessing, but no one had ever asked about money from the town. No, this came after the That fact. comes as a shocker. So as whatever consensus council wants to do, we hear that we probably reach back out to them and let them know we're not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Unless yeah, I hear something. I, I mean...
don't see it's the best interest of the town's money. Say that out loud, Bill, and I'll agree with you. Yeah, I don't think it's the best interest of the town's money to uh, spend five thousand dollars on a on that. Okay. It's fifteen, isn't it? They want fifteen. They want five thousand from us. Right. They want uh, to cover. I everything. agree. I think the propriety of this is questionable, frankly. And I don't, I agree with Councilman Kraft. I don't think we should be spending taxpayer dollars to chase the Guinness record for a nonprofit that's going to receive all kinds of money based on the fees that I see online that they're charging people to participate. Albeit, it's a worthy cause, but us underwriting a Guinness record seems to me to be dubious. So I can't support that. I, I see this as a, as a, as a marketing expense, right? And we don't, I don't see paying $5,000 for a marketing event to promote the Oak Island when we've got other agencies out there working on our behalf that are supposed to be marketing Oak Island. So maybe they should, could go ask some of those other agencies that already do marketing for us to, to contribute. Previously, we gave permission to kind of take over our town for that, that weekend and put up yep. however many 7,500 flamingos all over the town. Uh, oh, those are people. Yeah. I believe. So we'll oh. um, ask our clerk to draft a letter, and um, we will send something back to them, letting them know. That's all I had there. Thank you. Is there anything else on council? Close in. Other than the closed session, I have a motion to convene the closed session. I'll make a motion to go into closed session to discuss specific personnel pursuant to NCGS 143-318-11A6. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Motion carries. You needed to watch it. Bathroom before closed session. I was good. We're back from closed session. No action was taken. Um, do we have a motion to recess this meeting till Friday? I'll make a motion to recess this meeting until Friday, April 21st at 10 o'clock. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. And um, a motion to... <laughs> we don't, oh, that's right. We don't need a motion. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm going to go back and do